All right, so let's create, I suppose, a more exciting type of chart. And that will be a map chart. So we would like to plot some values on a map. So in this particular case, we have some sales data. You can see how we have reps on the left. Those are our salespeople. We have the date of sale. We have the region, the state, the city, and the brand, and the sale, right? And so on. So there's quite a bit of data here. So if I scroll the way down, control down, see about 20,000 records here going up. So we would like to uh, plot some data on a chart. And the data is going to be uh, basically how much sales we make in each one of our states. That's where we're going to start. Later on, we'll do some more things. But for now, we'll just do our sales by state. The thing is that to do this chart, you want to have some sort of aggregate data. So technically, it's possible to directly do it from a data sample like this, but it's going to get much slower and much irritating. And then there's also a lot of problems because you have to have your columns in a particular order. So the best thing to do is to first aggregate your data. So something like this can be done very easily with a pivot table. So I'm going to create a pivot table. If you're not familiar with pivot tables, I'm not really going to go in depth about pivot tables here. So if you want to learn more about pivot tables, I have several videos that covers pivot tables in great detail. So go watch those and then it will make a lot of sense. For now, I'm going to make a pivot table. So I'm going to click inside of my data, go under my data tab, create a pivot table. So that's going to come out like this. That's our pivot table. Now, what we want to do is plot the chart. So when we create a pivot table, the first thing we have to choose, again, you don't have to, but that's usually a good practice, to start with values field. The values is basically what are we planning to sum up. In this particular case, I would like to sum up sales for each one of the states. So see if we have multiple Illinois, we would like to find all Illinois state sales and sum up all of these sales. Now, what I'm summing up is this column sales. So therefore, I'm going to go to my tab for a pivot table that it made for me. And I'm going to go under values and add that particular column sales to my pivot table values. So that will just give me the total sales, right? Now, going back here, I want to now see how much are these sales for each state. So that's my state column. So I'm going to go ahead and go on the rows right here on the right, click add and do state. So this is going to give us exactly that, how much sales we make in each one of these states. So you can see in California, it's this much in Illinois, it's this much and so on. Right. And this is the total. Now, once you have your data in this form, then you're ready to make your map chart. Now you have to keep in mind that you have to make sure that the first column in your data, it doesn't have to be a pivot table. Just make sure that the final data is structured like this. So you have your locations, in this case, the abbreviation of the state on the left and the actual amounts for each one of those should be on the right, right? So uh, this can be a dollar amount. This can be a number of sales, anything. So these are the numbers. This is the values that correspond to those. So at this point, I'm ready to make my chart. So I could select this and do it. I could also just click on this and just make my chart. So I'm going to click here, go insert and chart. So that should create the chart. So there it is right now. The chart by default, it decided to make a column chart and you can see each state and we can see the total for each state. But that's kind of a boring way of presenting this. So we would like to make it more fancy, I guess. So we're going to go under here under chart type and we're going to scroll down and we're going to find map. So I'm going to use this first geo chart example. So I'm going to click on that and there it is. So it went here. But as we look at this, it doesn't make any sense. So right now, see, this is Canada. So it thinks we have. So right now, it basically looking at our California as Canada. That's what it did. And it has all the values over here. And then, for example, here we have India. 
So it's confusing which value is supposed to go where. So what we do, because we just have US states, we're going to go here and change some things. First of all, you have to make sure that, see, you have the range of your data, which it's picking up from here. That's our data range. And then we have the region. That's going to be the first column, which is going to be your locations. And the second one, the color, is your numbers. That's what you have here. So now we're going to go under Customize. And we're going to go under Geo. Okay, so the region currently is world. So because of that, it's thinking like these are countries. So let me find out which country that is. And then it figures, okay, so CA, you probably mean Canada, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to change the region. So I'm going to open that and we have different regions. So you can do Europe, you can do Africa. So in our case, this is just the US data. So we're going to go United States. There we go. So now the confusion is cleared and we can see that right now we can see this is our California and we can see the darker green means more. And if we rolled over, we see the number and this is the next one. See, that's here and so on. So we can roll over and we can see that's Illinois. It looks great and it shows our sales by state and we have all of them plotted on our map. By default, right now what it's doing, it's choosing the green color as a positive thing. Since this is sales data, if we're making more sales, that's probably good. So that's our green color. And we have red color as a negative, meaning less sales. So if I go back here and click on my map and customize. So if this doesn't show up right away, click on this thing and click edit chart, right? It will. I'm going to go back under geo and see this is our min and max. So that's why it's going that way. So green meaning high, that's what we have. Now, if you don't like green and you want it to be blue, obviously go here and change it. Now we have our blue as an indication of good, I guess, more and red as an indication making less sales. So you can go ahead and change this colors minimum, maximum, however you want. The idea is going to be if the numbers that you have, the higher represents better and lower represents worse, then you will kind of choose the color for the higher to represent something that you think is the positive color and the other one that you think is the negative color. Now, if these numbers are maybe pollution numbers in its states, instead of having the dollar amounts, then you would think if there's more pollution, that's no good, right? In those cases, you would switch those colors up. So you would go under customize under geo and you would decide, you know what, let me make this one red and I'm going to make this one green because there's less pollution in those states. But in our case, it was spot on. So I'm going to just change it back green here and we will do red It's too dark. We will choose something like that. Eh, I kind of like that. That's good. So that shows us more sales. This is less sales. And if you go into chart style, you can also change the background color like usual on all charts. And you can also change the font on this chart. And by the way, this is also like the middle color. So if you think like you have intermediate values and high values and you want to have, you know, the middle color, you can do that too. And this is when there is no value. What do you want to do with those? So hopefully that was pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead now and create a different type of chart. So this is kind of great. And maybe I'll leave it. So we'll just call it geo map chart. Whoop. That's good. So the next thing I want to do, I want to show you the map type of charts have two options. So the first one is this geo chart that we're currently using. Now, when you have something like this, this works great if you're doing some illustration by region, like in our case, the region is state in the US, or if you want it on the world map to show up in different countries, different numbers, you would have country names here and that would work just fine as well. So that's another alternative, but we want to go to a different type of chart. I can create a different type of chart from this particular 
set that we have, but it's not gonna be great. So I'm gonna make it just for you to see what's gonna happen. So if I do chart, so I'm gonna go ahead and change that chart to, if I scroll down, if you remember, we had this first one, geo chart, and then we have this second one that's with markers. So if I go ahead and click on that, and again, we'll have to go to our customize and make sure that this is limited to United States, we'll have this. So you can see it's coming up little by little, so, and you can see in each state, it's putting a marker. And then if we just roll over it, we can see how much it is. Now, for a state level, this absolutely makes no sense. Although you can do it, right? It works. Now, let me show you an example where this is awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. So go back here. So we have this data. In this data, we have our cities. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna create a new column that's gonna be state and city combined. So what I want to have, I want to add a new column here. I'm gonna call it location. And maybe we want this to be the same formatting as this. So I'm gonna click on this, click on this format painter and click on location to steal the formatting. So that looks good. Now what I want this to look like, so for example, here is Chicago, Illinois, right? I want this to basically be in this format city state. So to do that, I'm obviously not going to type each one. So I'm going to do equal sign and I'm going to click on the city. That's my E2. Now after that city, I had like comma and space. So for that, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do the end sign, which is the plus sign for text in Google Sheets or Excel. And then we're going to take what we want in quotes. So I want some text of mine. So I'm gonna do quote, comma, space, quote. So the quotes are indicators for text and inside of quotes, the comma space is the actual text I want to use. And then another and sign, which is basically another plus sign. And then I'm gonna do the state, which is my D2. I'm gonna hit enter. Now, if this is not making sense to you, again, I have a lot of videos about join and concatenation and all of these functions. Watch those, I explain everything in great detail. But I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm just trying to show you what type of format of data you're gonna need to make this work. So you need either something like this that shows you the city, or you need something that will be a particular address. Now, again, you want to be mindful, you don't need too many possible locations because then it's gonna look insane. All right, so now that I have this and I wanna check if this went all the way, so control down, that looks good, control up, that made our new location column. Looking good, now I'm gonna make a pivot table out of this. So I'm gonna go under data, I'm gonna do pivot table, and this time again, I want to sum up my sales and I wanna break it down by location. So I'll go under values. I'll go ahead and pick sales. And then I'll go under rows and select location. That was the whole reason of creating that. So look in here. Now we have all our sales in each city with the state, right? That's our data about what? 28 here and less than about 27 different cities. So now we're gonna plot this on our map. And you can see like in Illinois, we have you know, multiple cities. So in some states we have multiple cities. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plot this on a chart. So I'm gonna go ahead and do insert, chart. This thing shows up again. It's good, but kind of boring. So we go under chart type, scroll down and use this one, the chart with markers. So click on that. And that gives us this. And again, we have to limit our location in this particular case to the US because these are just US sales. So I'm gonna go under customize, geo, and instead of the world, United States, and the colors are fine as is. Don't have to change something. So as you can see, it's loading little by little. 
So for whatever reason, this chart takes time to load. I think the reason for this is because probably it's making requests to the server to figure out where that location is, but I'm not sure. Maybe they just designed it to kind of animate like that. Probably not. It's taking too long. Anyway, so here we are. That's our chart. Now we can go here and see, oh, so that's our Los Angeles sales. Great. What is this? That's a different city in California. What is this? That's San Francisco, again, in California. Again, go in here. We can see that's Chicago. And sometimes when things are too close, this thing pops out and you can roll over it. So you can see that's one city in Illinois. That's another city in Illinois. And that's Chicago right here and so on. So you can roll over and you can see different cities. So in Texas, for example, right here, we have, as you can see, multiple cities. So we have Dallas, we have Houston, and we have Austin. All of those on the map. A great map, again, to have when you have actual cities and you want to display them on a map. That will be it for this video. I think that covers everything you want to know about how to properly create a map. I'm just going to rename this and I'll call this map with markers. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.